Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the FTD Virtual Design Show titled A Fresh Look for Valentine's Day and Spring, featuring Deborah De La Flor, AIFD. As a quick housekeeping note, Deborah will be taking questions during the session. So if you have a question for her, simply type it in the chat box in the toolbar at the bottom of your screen. All right, let's get started. Welcome, Deborah. Thank you, Janet. I'm so proud to be here and thank you to FTD for always sponsoring me. I'm so proud uh, to do what I do on behalf of FTD for all the florists and the education. Today, I really wanna talk about the Valentine holiday that is really approaching quickly and how Valentine doesn't always have to be red and white or red, white, and pink. We always get that kind of color stuck in our head because that's the way it's been for generations as red is the color of love and passion and all that type of thing and the more feminine colors, but we can still do bold, bright, wonderful colors. And maybe that's gonna help us out to keep costs down a little bit with our wholesalers, the importers, the growers, work with them and they're gonna love you saying, okay, I can take my yellow and orange roses along with my reds and pinks and lavender. So we wanna really talk about that and the colors that are still absolutely beautiful. So the first design I'm gonna create is in a great uh, ceramic vessel, vessel and I've taken some aspidestra leaves and you all know how to uh, you know, loop them. You just insert them into their cells and put them into design. It makes it look a more trendy and clean. And then the color I'm gonna do with, you can see the flowers that are on my work table here. I thought I saw this, I was like, there it is, pink and yellow. So, you know, when you put a heart in it or anything to do with Valentine, so why would we incorporate reds and whites when we've got a great color, you know, scheme right here for us? So it's just a wonderful thing. And we're gonna start with one of my favorites. Y'all know how much I love the, the rose lilies. They are just gorgeous. Look how it makes such a statement already. Ta-da! I've framed that with my wonderful huckleberry foliage that I adore. I have some lily grass here and I've made a little knot which I call a love knot. I always make up all these little stories, but then I realize that I never share it with the customer, so they don't know my stories anyway, but I call that a little love knot. You just take two pieces of the um, lily grass, loop it around, make a knot, pull it tight, and it just gives a little bit weight to uh, the lily grass and brings your eye out with the design to you know, make a nice line. And now we're gonna go ahead and put in that yellow that is already on that wonderful little Valentine pick and inserting the flowers, as we know, cutting each stem very clean and inserting those stems deeply into the foam. The foam has already been well soaked. I do use Smithers Oasis brand foam. It is the best, as we all know, and we, we are professional florists, so we must use the best product available. We just have to, it's a must. Isn't that fabulous already? Look at those lines and that color is just fabulous. And then I really love these button disc buds. They last a long time. They are chrysanthemum and they look kind of zinnia-ish. So the customers think that I, I've had some call me and tell me, oh, I love the marigolds and the arrangement you sent. And I just said, oh, I'm so glad you like them. You know, if they think it's a marigold, that's good for me. So, and it made them happy, no need to correct them. So there we go. Aren't these turntables fabulous? And then we have stock. Oh, something I adore, I love the fragrance that it gives flowers. One of the first uh, things that the consumer does when they receive a bouquet of flowers, what? <gasps> they go right in there so they can just smell that wonderful fragrance of flowers. So you have to make sure that you, you do um, achieve their little wish of that by putting flowers that do have that great fragrance of freshness. And, and I'm just kind of evenly distributing Actually, I'm not even paying attention to what I'm doing because I'm talking, but it looks pretty good. <laughs> Deborah. Anyway, so we're going to do pink. We've got the pink on that little ribbon that already came with that little pick. So it kind of already told me what to do. I didn't even have to be smart. I just thought, wow, that's pretty. Let's use that. These are the beautiful Mondial Rose. That's that wonderful, very pale pink. That's just so ladylike. Isn't that pretty? I keep forgetting, I don't wanna twirl too quick. Inserting those flowers deeply into that foam and there's just all these little valleys and it's got depth and, oh, ooh, isn't this fun? Look at this color. It's kind of got a little of both. It's got a little like that raspberry hot pink and then it's got that pale buttercream yellow uh, right down in the center. So that kind of blends with that pick as well. And that's like a surprise, that pop of brighter color down in there that's just so fabulous. 
Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. How can you not be madly in love with flowers? We are so blessed that we have chose the career in flowers that we have and that we are able to and blessed, blessed, so blessed to uh, share the, the passion and the love and the beauty of flowers you know, with the world to all of our customers and for them to enjoy. People remember flowers that they've gotten all their life. Their first bouquet of flowers, they never forget. Did you know that? They always remember the first bouquet of flowers they ever received. So we're gonna just do different colors. Isn't that fun? Now, who's not gonna want that when they see that? So this is something you would take your photos and you're gonna put it on your website. Make sure you've got clear, clear photos. There's pricing, do three different prices. People will usually go to the middle, maybe the higher. Don't be afraid to, to do larger pieces. You'll be very surprised at the prices people get. Put those 300, 400, 500 dollar items on your website and you'll be very surprised because the Valentine holiday is a holiday that the customer spends more money than any other holiday on flowers. So this is your golden opportunity to really uh, show off your talents, get beautiful flowers and really make some big, gorgeous designs. Another little tip for your uh, website is doing a designer's choice. Take just like a beauty shot, or you can probably even get it off uh, the internet somewhere, of a soft color palette, just all pastel colors, and put designer's choice, three prices. Then do a bolder, brighter color beauty shot of bright, bold colors and put designer's choice with three categories. Because we just put a generic um, photo the very first time we did a designer's choice, and they wanted what was in that beauty shot. So then we realized, oh, let's just put a couple different colors in there. So that's a, another good thing to do. And you really have to be present in your social media. It's incredibly important to stay on your Facebook, Instagram, and really let people see that you're out there because if you don't, others will. And they'll say, oh, that looks great from that place. I'm going to go there. So you really have to do it. It's a must right now. And your, your email marketing, my son, Michael, does a tremendous job with that for our company and he does it with humor. So people always love that. They'll send remarks, they, they love the emails. And you'll notice when they get sent out, you'll get orders right away. And then others will order something else other than what you're promoting. And my husband Gus does all my email for me too. So that's a pretty cool thing. So there's our first design in other colors. So we're doing the yellows, the pinks and the whites. So that's a great color combination for your Valentine holiday. You can take these away, Marta. Thank you so much. Then we're gonna move on to the hand tie bouquets. Actually, they're, they're pre-made foliage bouquets and they're available on the uh, FTD Marketplace website. So they're already done. Isn't this fabulous? It's already created. It's a hand tie bouquet with mixed foliage and it takes a second. Now I was doing something silly and I always tattle on myself. We would cut these bouquets, you know, put, a, put our flower food, I use the Chrysol flower food, number two, and we, we do that. And then we would put them in our cooler and bring them back out when we were gonna make the arrangements and put the flowers in them. And then my husband said, I don't know why we're taking them in and out. It took you a half a second to do that. So now we just bring them out, take that half a second, chop it, put it in our uh, fresh flower food. And then we create the design because we were doing too much in and out of the cooler. Let's have them all ready because we're not making them. We're just putting them in the vase. So this is the way to go. And we truly believe in, you know, our mixed bouquets. This is the same bouquet. And you just simply cut it and drop it in and you're done. And I told my girls, don't be rearranging. This is the whole point of this bouquet, not to change it or do anything to it. And it's not necessary. So they're really, really a magnificent item. So we really love our foliage bouquets. And I'm going to take it back out and create a quick little hand tied. Again, this is some other colors that aren't really traditional for Valentine. So we're going to do some purples and oranges. So we've already got our lovely bouquet. And I'm just gonna start inserting the flowers. And you all know how to do that. Facing them kind of evenly in the design. So I got my triangle going on. And then, ooh, look at this Dusty Miller. <gasps> That is just stunning. Look at that. <gasps> and see how big the bouquet is already? It's, it's a wonderful thing because you've already got that spiral hand tied with the foliage bouquet. So it really stretches out the arrangement. 
for you. Pretty. And you can push and pull your flowers. And we're gonna add some hypericum. And that nice peach color also blends with the same flowers. Just keep blending your colors with what you've already got. Don't you love it when you find just the right thing? You're like jackpot, that's beautiful. And then we're gonna go with the wonderful button disc buds again that are so long lasting. And I'm just kind of evenly placing them around the bouquet. Then, ooh, let's do some of this oryngium. So we've got some great textures going on because we have the very soft, soft, velvety texture that's so wonderful from the Dusty Miller. We have the nice shiny kind of texture from the Hypericum, all the petal counts from the chrysanthemum to the roses. And oh, it's already so interesting because of that. And then we're adding this fun, it's a green oryngium. Too bad you guys can't say, oh, how pretty. I can't get to hear what you're saying or thinking. But isn't that lovely? I'll and then say we're it, gonna add, oh, how beautiful. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know, us, us designers, we thrive on praise. Then I'm adding a few little Veronicas. Again, just for, just because I want to. Isn't that pretty? And then I'm going to wrap it off. We wrap off our bouquets with different items. We use uh, the bind wire from Smithers Oasis. We use zip ties. This is the waterproof tape from Smithers Oasis. And I'm just going to tape it tightly around my spiral bouquet and it sticks to it. So it keeps it very nice and tight. Then I'm gonna cut the bouquet on a measure. I never measure right. I always gotta do it a few times. Cut all the stems evenly, nice and clean with your floral pruners. And we've got our flower food and we say, oh, ta-da. So there you have a beautiful hand tie that just takes minutes. And then you would take, if you'd like a beautiful ribbon, maybe an orange or purple or some kind of a pattern that you have that matches with uh, the Valentine holiday. And you can put a little pink or purple heart or none at all. And you simply put that in the cooler and who's not gonna love that. And it's just fabulous with really not that many flowers. So there we go, thank you. And thank you for our little pre-made bouquets. We love that. Oh, wait, I forgot the magic theme. This is the part right here. This is what makes it the magic part. All right, ready? Element of surprise. So there's a little sign that goes with that one. So it also blends with the colors and makes it fun. And whenever we all know you put a heart or a little I love you or anything like that, people are gonna purchase that because that's what they want. It just has to say, happy Valentine's Day, be mine, I love you you know, and then you're in. So they'll automatically go for this design. So anything it takes when you need to push that other color, oh, we're really heavy on orange, or we've got so much yellow, incorporate it. It makes all the difference in the world in what you do. Put it on the website quickly. Another thing is you really have to have great communication with uh, your office team and the people that are answering your phone and taking your orders and doing your website. And we're constantly going back and forth. Okay, we've, we've got about 50 p &E left. So we just make them aware when they're selling, okay, we're down to four or five of this uh, specific design that's on the website, you know, what we need. So it's uh, really important to have that open communication. So this is a fun thing. I've done this for years and we do this for Valentine's Day also. When your roses get a little more mature and they're starting to open or blossom a little more and you also want to move color, I do this um, with... The roses as an alternative uh, alternative um, dozen roses. So I'll take four of any color and I put them together and I tape them with my corsage tape. And I've already taken aspidestra foliage and I've taped that off. And then I put three aspidestra foliage around each cluster. And this is called color blocking, or at least that's what I made up. So it's color blocking. Then we have another bundle. This is our yellow roses that we need to move. They're a little blossoming. So there you have half, uh, eight roses. And then I add the other color. <gasps> Isn't that great? Then I always have a couple of the foliages left in case like see this little gap here 
I need to fill in there to make that bouquet full. I always have a couple more in case I need to fill in somewhere. But isn't that fun? So this is a dozen roses, four, 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 and four. Isn't that great? So keep this in mind. Even maybe you had miniature garden roses or spray roses and you had a lot and they're opening. You can do the same thing with a few stems of them and do color blocking with your aspidestra foliage and then make your cute little segregated bouquets here. I mean, you could do this with one if you wanted to do three roses and sell a trio and a bud base. You know, it's all imagine the possibilities. What are you going to do with this idea? Oh, and you're already thinking, oh, wow, you know, what can I do with this? So I want you to remember all these little tricks and things, and then you're going to use them as your own. I'm going to be very proud of you and what you've done. Sorry for the noise when I'm cutting. And then again, there it is. And then we take a little bit of the leaf shining. We don't cake it on. We just shine it up so it looks nice and professional because we know that the foliage comes in and sometimes there's little water spots, you know, from the water where they've been uh, hydrated, where they're growing. So there's another idea, alternative dozen roses, color blocking, a way to move things, or if they're getting a little more mature, you always want to use those mature because they get real tight in a cluster. So it makes it kind of, you know, a cool idea. So yay. So there's that one. Woo. What's next? A fun idea, Deb. We do have a question back from the other design. Somebody okay. was asking if you have any tips on keeping Dusty Miller hydrated because sometimes it, it wilts too quickly. We are so lucky with Dusty Miller and Hydrangea. Um, you know, we you, you buy from reputable companies that sell fresh product. And every once in a while, one will kind of go limp in the whole bucket. And we just recut it, let it come back to life. But um, we're always really lucky. We do use the flower food that is critical in this industry to make sure that your flowers are hydrated properly. Uh, nothing in the shop goes in water without it being hydrated. Like I said, we use the Chrysal um, product. Um, just make sure you do that and, and give proper care and handling. But again, we don't have any problems. And every once in a while, something's going to wilt. Just give it a new cut and it'll come right back to life. We're pretty lucky with all that over all these years. So thanks for asking that question. Okay, so Marta, can you hand me this? My microphone is keeping me from wandering off this one. Mm -hmm. I just want to show this one. I want to show this one. Yeah, I just want to show it. Yeah, and then that one too. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so this is something that we sell a lot of and we do it um, so well and so easy um, is our mixed roses in our hat box. This has been uh, such a great seller uh, for us. And we thought we were really going to sell the red even more. You know, red is love and all that, which we will for Valentine. But we really push the colors. And then we'll use again if they're starting to open a little more or even if something is breaks off, it's still a good rose because you only need the stem to be this long. You have your floral foam, your Smithers Oasis soaked uh, properly. There's a nice liner in here. We do put, when we send these out and put them in the cooler, we have plastic that we wrap around it, bring it up the sides and staple it so that the box does not get destroyed because, and we don't, we do not tape it down. We want the consumer to be able to use the hat box again. So we keep that unattached and just put that clear wrap around it. But this is one of our best sellers. You know, we saw the company start doing this on social media, I don't know, a couple of years ago where they were really doing all this cluster style design. And we're thinking, well, that's so simple. Why didn't we think it needed to be hard? And you know what? Valentine's Day is not the, it's not the time to be doing complicated designs. It's all about speed and getting things done and having your designs in a production line. So this is a design that's really popular for us. And we absolutely love, uh, you know, this product. I'm not sure, uh, did they come with a liner? I see the question. Uh, no, I have to buy the liner separately. So we do get these in Miami. I don't, I'm not sure if FTD carries them, but there is a company called Low Wholesale in Miami and you do have to purchase the liner separately. So, oh, and, and then we're gonna talk about what names are you gonna give these bouquets? Um, you know, um, oh, what did I come up with? I had love comes in many colors, the many colors of love you know, that kind of thing. So come up with something that's catchy that people will realize for the Valentine holiday that they can purchase this. And that it's guys need to know it's okay to get something other than a dozen red roses, which we love to do. But let's try to be diverse and show people other things. You know, everyone's different. We all have different personalities. 
So we all want something different. You know, when they come in saying, well, I need to get red roses because it's Valentine's, right? Well, not necessarily. What is your wife's favorite color? It's yellow. Then she's going to love this arrangement of yellow flowers, you know, because that's her favorite color. So that's just another little cool, easy to do. You know, you can train someone to do that pretty quickly. This is another one we love. You know, I love you with all my heart, you know, bouquet. And then this one, we, we sell it as it can be multicolors and multi-flowers. We do not sell it in any specific. Uh, they can say, oh, I'd like a softer color palette or a brighter color palette, but they don't really know the flowers that will be in it or, you know, what exactly. But isn't it pretty? And this can be things, again, if something has broken off, you know, save those things or keep a couple hat boxes beside you and create these as you go. But isn't it fun with just the textures? We have a cymbidium. Uh, you know, the, the wonderful little Gerber daisies, just that color. How can you not be madly in love with that? Just the color palette is a happy one. So, and a nice little, it's already in the heart box. So it's not necessary to, you know, put another heart or anything in it, but you're welcome to put a little heart in there. Um, and then it's a little hard because I've tried to ribbon, you know, put ribbon around here and then tie it off. So I use a little U glue when I do that to keep the ribbon back here you know, from falling down. Also with the hat box, we do the, the little bit of U glue, a little square dab to make sure the ribbon doesn't fall down because the drivers are, you know, in a rush. But isn't that pretty? We love it so much. Okay, so now I'll take this and this. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, my assistant, Miss Marta. And then this, mm -hmm. you don't have to move those now. You can just hand me that. So I created a... Um, a nice little armature out of um, like a, one little bit of grapevine I had left. You know how the center is really hard to work with? That's your, your little center of a big grapevine wreath and you can't pull it apart and you're like fighting with it. So then I was fiddling a little bit and I pulled it and I was like, oh, magic. So it did this all by itself. So I was like, perfect. You know, we can't make, oh, well, I'm a very asymmetrical designer anyway. I can't do anything perfect. Now, Marta, who you saw off the side, she can make everything perfection, you know, measured, whatever, just with her eye. I can't. And I don't even want to. I like it asymmetrical. I like it pretending nature did it all by itself. And the wind flew it. It went like that. It makes me happy. So I've started with that uh, wonderful armature. And I've just taken uh, three pieces of a thick gauge florist wire, taped it, and then created my little handle. Thank you, Marisol, for saying beautiful. And then check it out. Look at this kale. How can we not be excited about what we do for a living when we have such magnificent product to work with? And then we have these beautiful lavender hydrangea that is a natural color. This is something that Gus grows here at the shop and at my home on the property for us, the Song of India, which we absolutely love. And then I have just one piece of the hanging amaranthus that I tucked in and just swirled around my uh, little design. So let's see what I come up with. I was telling Janet before we started this that when I do the designs for these videos, they're always surprise packages. I never know what I'm going to do. I just put the colors I want to work with and then take it from there. This is that wonderful cool water rose. That it, Look how thick and voluptuous that is. Oh, my heavens. It's just a beautiful thing. So we'll put two over there. We'll put one across the back. Balance it. Fun, fun. And look at these little yellow miniature garden roses. Aren't they stunning? Oh my heavens. They're just absolutely delicious. Oh my gosh. Pretty. And then we'll add some more on the other side of the arrangement. So we've got our color also distributed. It's not enough just to have the product distributed. You have to make sure your color is proper in the designs and colors kind of like a it is. It's a big deal to me. To me, it's the most important element of the design is color. And we've got the solid dago. Now this is spring. I hopped right in, right, right from Valentine into spring and didn't even say a word. Can you tell we're in spring yet? So we're talking a little about spring and spring is great because, it's, oh my gosh, this is, you know, the bouquet can be called spring is in the air. Um, just gorgeous product that's in all these lovely colors. And I'm gonna add a little bit of the Veronica again. And I just kind of put it right in that bouquet and bring that stem out so I still keep with my spiral shape. 
Ooh, these are pretty. This is a Lysianthus, all right. Nice, look at the Lysianthus, it's so delicate. And again, another texture, you know, that's what the consumer likes. They find that one or two flowers that they love and they're like, oh, what is that? And then you always have a goofy customer. I have one that said, I don't want any more of that cabbage. <laughs> and you just gotta laugh, okay. No problem, no cabbage for you. But anyway, and most customers are like, oh my God, what is that? And they want it. So you, you have to try, you must. Isn't it looking lovely? It's looking lovely on my side, that's for sure. So I don't really think we need another thing. So let's move away. And then we've got our Monstera leaves that we also grow at Delaflor that just cover everything. So it's fabulous. There's the back of your design. And then we're just going to tuck a couple pieces right under there just to give it that finish. And another one. And then since I've got my tape over here, I'll do that again. I'm just taping it with that um, waterproof Oasis tape just to keep it all together. And I'm gonna make a lot of noise again. And this is, uh, maybe I'll use base over there. And you know that when it's springtime, everyone just loves the, the bird or the butterfly. Marta, can you hand me a few of the, the little, or nest, just hand me that whole little cluster of goodies. Isn't it pretty? Look, it's beautiful. And then you could take the little birdies. Just hand me everything. Mm -hmm, total. Yeah, thank you. So I have these cute little birdies. You know, and some people learn to this and some are not, but the consumer wants it. Oh, I want the one with the little bird. And you're like, oh, okay. Even though you made a gorgeous design and the bird was just an afterthought. But look at him just tucked in there. Peekaboo. So he's got a cute little home and you already have a wonderful place to place your birds because you've got the, they're just hanging on to the lovely little armature you made. You can place a couple in the design and that's that little element of cuteness or surprise that will get them to talk about it. You know, you can always use your butterflies. Um, you know, more realistic ones are always fun. I love the monarchs because, you know, that's like a real one. And when you get to see one of those, you get excited. So I think the consumer does as well. So we keep a few of those on hand. And the springtime is all about um, new beginnings, new life. So bird's nests are always a great way to start a hand tie bouquet or a bouquet in anything. Uh, a bird nest, it's all about the birdies, the butterflies, the feathers. You know, it's, it's just what we think of when we think of spring. Eggs, bunnies, you know, little baby ducks. So it's just a fun time to design, you know, with that. So I hope you enjoyed that arrangement. Okay. You can leave that here for a second and bring me this. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Martita. Thank you so much. So here's one I already pre-made just before we went on camera. Oh my goodness, isn't this cool? When I looked at this, this little guy for some silly reason, leave it to me, I said, oh my goodness, look at Wilbur. And I thought, Wilbur, what the heck? So isn't it cute? So it's more of like a static line where it's a rectangle design. You know, it's all within that rectangle. So your eye just stays in there and follows through. It kind of goes up and down. And then I looped a, uh, a vine that happens to be a Stephanotis vine that we're growing outside. And, you know, cut that both ends are in the foam and made that just kind of dance across the design. And it just makes it feel a little softer and it makes it feel like the birdie's sheltered. So he's got a nice little sheltering place. I started the design. I have the foam in the container. This is one of my favorite uh, containers um, and it's soaked very well. And then I started it with the millet. I love the millet. And this is a product that is dry that you can use all year long, all year long. So I framed the bird or a little Wilbur. Uh, with the millet because I thought oh, he needs something to eat so that's what he's got in his house and then I placed the two blue hydrangea and then kind of went up with there with our wonderful uh, little uh, pom-poms little chrysanthemums and the the way that the Gerbers are facing they're they're 
in the design. So your eye stays in there. Not one of them is turned the other way to look out because it would make your eye go the other direction. So you have to keep the whole composition within that so you can enjoy it. It's like a beautiful painting in a frame or something that you can enjoy that. And then I made little stair steps. I terraced a couple of the little green uh, chrysanthemums that are just beautiful just to bring your eye down in there in his little nesting place. And again, some of that green orangium uh, that we love and that looped another little piece just to give it a little more softness over the ceramic container uh, with that wonderful little uh, Stephanotis vine. And to bring that height up is what we use the delphinium, the blue delphinium. And then your color blends again, because you have that blue delphinium and it comes down to the blue hydrangea and then goes right back up. I'm going to cut this leaf off because it keeps getting in my face. So, uh, and you can prune your foliage as well. And it looks better now. Um, so just a fun design and with that little one little creature, or it could be uh, an, a little nest in there or a couple of little eggs in there, that little element of surprise that gets the designer uh, talking about uh, your designs and which flower shop made that, you know, and your name is mentioned. And that's what you want. You want people to talk about the designs. Another thing I want to discuss is don't apologize for your pricing. Do not apologize for your pricing. I remember it was Mother's Day last year. And then a customer who had been in many times and loves our work, but he was standing in the cooler and our work area is right here and the customers are right there. They see us and our display pool is right there. So we're all here together talking and enjoying each other and they're watching our craft. So it's a wonderful thing. And um, so he said, wow, your prices have gone up. Man, I got my butt around the counter real quick. <laughs> I was taking offense to that. And I said, hi, how are you? It's good to see you again. And I said, you know, didn't you pay more for bread and milk and gas? And he was like, yeah. And I said, you know what? I'm sorry, but I can't apologize for my price. And then he felt bad and he goes, well, and I, but I wouldn't let him, I had to finish my conversation. And I said, you know, I can't apologize for my pricing. And I said, it's either I charge what I need to, and I'm not charging too much. I'm charging what I need to, so that I can stay in business. Otherwise I have to close. Boy, he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. So you don't need to apologize. I'm doing great. Business is great and it's never been better. And I'm so proud, but I can't apologize for that. Well, that was the end of that conversation. So sometimes you just have to be real with your customers in a nice way with a smile the whole time. And somehow I get away with it. But, you know, don't apologize, you know, for that and, and have fun coloring your world with flowers. And don't be afraid to do bold. Like one design for, for Valentine's could be bold and beautiful. I'm going to um, have Marta show me. I'm going to sit this here. I think I can walk this far. Uh, let's see. We got 12 more minutes. So let's hand me I'm this Deb, We've one. got a couple of questions, too. Okay. Somebody yeah. was asking no. about yeah. the, for the Gerberas, do you recommend wiring them or using the Gerber straws or leaving them natural? Okay. It kind of depends on the Gerbers. Um, these don't have anything on them. A lot of times if they come in and they harden already and they look down, we get them, they have the straws, we pull the straws up to the top. So usually they stay like that. But if you're not going to see the stem, I leave the straws on. I, have, I never wire a Gerb. Um, it's just something I've never done, uh, many, many, many years ago, 40 years ago, we had to wire the roses and I, I just, um, you know, if you have to do something because you have to, but I don't, I use the straws and again, purchasing, sometimes things go wrong, but from really great companies that have fresh product. Okay. So this is my idea for the bold and beautiful. Deb, so, can I ask you one more question? This was back yes. to your, your grapevine one. Somebody was asking where you got that grapevine holder, but it wasn't a, you made that. I yes. Just, Okay. It was just a big roll of grapevine, but I'd already used up the whole roll. And that was the very center that's real hard. And you kind of can't really do anything with it because you can't move it. And somehow I got it a little bit apart. And then I just let it stay how it went. And, uh, and then I just wired it in place with uh, three wires and made my handle with that. But uh, grapevine wreath, just purchase it from your wholesalers, you know, or do what we're doing. The wholesalers, your importers, everybody's got all this product for us now. So we're very lucky with that. So Great. here's bold and beautiful. And you'll kind of notice what the heck is that red ribbon doing on that? Kind of bothers me a little bit, but it doesn't bother me, me anymore when I do this. So then it goes from, you know, whatever everyday arrangement to ta-da. And then the ribbon matches all people. And then that little bit of red on the edge of the little spray rose makes it blend together. So this could be your bold and beautiful Valentine. So, you know, name it those things, tell your customers. And when, a, when the customers come into the front, they're just going to see this and go, bam, ooh. And they love color. Men love yellows, oranges, reds. They love those colors together. So you will be able to move some of this other product that you normally couldn't, even your, you know, your green hydrangea. 
go for it. I'm going to be so proud. You'll be surprised to see what the consumer purchases, but just put a heart in anything and it's sold. It's a glorious thing. It's a glorious thing. So we're going to show uh, my, my last design, speaking of glorious. So I'm going to have Martha take these off and then we'll bring another design out. We also do these postcards that have our building. Thank you, my darling. Oh, look. Isn't it delicious? See how easy I get sidetracked? It doesn't take a squirrel for me. It just takes flowers. But we have these wonderful postcards that we created and they go on every order. And then it also shows some of our other work on the back. So whenever you have a chance to promote your company uh, with a postcard on every order, it goes behind the, the enclosure card. Uh, this is a good thing to do. You can either put a coupon. We have a $5 off uh, towards any purchase and they come in with this. And our building is a, a landmark in our area. So people know the building. That's why we took a picture of that on there, the postcard too. So it's kind of a good uh, you know, thing to do. Let's see, isn't this glorious? Say yes, Janet, since you're the only one I can hear. So pretty, pretty. Um, I love it. Gorgeous. Don't be afraid to put glorious in your cooler. I talked about that earlier, doing your 250, 300, $400 arrangement, do it. You'll be surprised. And you'll be like dancing around when you sell that. Oh, mine sold. High five. You know, it's what we love. And this design is in, it's in a syndicate. It's one of my favorite containers they have. Gold urn. And I adore it. And then I just went outside and I cut some branches off of an oak tree outside. And it's even complete with a little bit of uh, a bird poop to keep it real. Oops. So now my hands have it. So it just makes you frame that design. It stretches it out. And don't be afraid of drama. I know during the holidays, your, your space is very limited and your coolers and your trucks. But you know, when someone spends that type of money, they want to see that. They want to have that dramatic effect. So don't be afraid to stress those branches out a little further than you think you should. Just do it. And it's just a fun thing. But look at the deliciousness with that kale, with those pink hydrangea, the... Um, Cymbidiums, we purchase cymbidiums on the long stem and then the bottom ones, we because you can't see them when you put it in a vase, all the bottom blooms we cut off and put in the water tubes and then insert them into the design. So there's your water tube and we just put them right down in there. If we need them to be a little longer, we use one of the little skewers and we tape it on and put that right in there too, give the flower a fresh cut. But isn't that delicious? Again, the Dusty Miller. And then I was doing it all pinks and purples and I'm all happy with that. And then I thought we need to pop us some color just to make it exciting. So I used that same little miniature garden rose with that yellow and that little reddish tip. And I have one really tucked down in there. Can you see it? Look at him, yay. And he was just a side one. I cut him and stuck him way down in for depth. You always wanna have that that depth so people can really get down into the design and enjoy what is in there. Look at this beautiful thing. And it just looks like a whole little garden. You can go in with the different types of foliages, you know, and flowers and some of the design spaced out, but there's a lot of depth in the design. See how wide it goes out to the side. So you just create such a beautiful little world uh, down in there with the beautiful products we have. Again, just purchase the freshest products, give your um, customers um, a chance you know we always think we know what they want you know show them what we're we're the boss do what you want to do and then sell it it's what we can do because we can sell it with a passion that we have I want to invite anybody uh, if they have any more questions about anything that I've done I would love to answer anything uh, that you may have and I really want to wish all of you a most prosperous and wonderful um, Valentine holiday in spring and a magnificent 2023. Um, really so proud of the industry for really hanging in there through the last couple of years and, and, and the, the fact that the consumer wanted to say whatever they wanted to say with flowers and the beauty that we have. So we're really excited about that. So are there any questions or remarks? Wow, Deb, uh, thanks for sharing your incredible talent with us. Um, yes, as Deb man mentioned, um, if you've got any final questions, drop those in the chat. We'll be sure to get those answered. Um, and we do have, I see one. I yes. see a question. Great. Um, she said, I'm in 
I'm from Chattanooga, I believe it said, and I don't know how to sell that kind of arrangement. You know how you sell it? You can sell it with this one thing and it doesn't cost anything. Enthusiasm. If you are excited about it, oh my God, I can make the most gorgeous garden style elegant arrangement for you. And, you know, give the budget. 250, 350, 400 dollars, and I can make a stunning bouquet for you. And if you are excited, they want whatever you're telling them about. I can use this and this and this. They're not even gonna know what those flowers mean. Hydrangea, some kale, some orchids, and roses, and they're gonna be, oh my God, that sounds wonderful. I'll take it. So sell with enthusiasm. Easy. Thanks for your question, Judy. Um, if anybody has any more questions, drop those in the chat right there. Um, and I do want to encourage everyone to keep an eye on your inbox tomorrow because the FTD Flower Exchange team will be sending out a special offer to you. So I'll, I'll leave it, pique your interest at that. And how are you, how are you, how are you able to maintain the hydrangeas? I mentioned that as well. A lot of people seem to have problems with hydrangeas and, and we don't, um, we have hydrangeas on a standing order. We get blue, white, we get an assorted box that's got the, the beautiful natural pink and some purples. We get the green and we use the, the flower food, the, the Chrysler flower food. We cut them with our knife, put them down into the flower food. We let them drink for a couple hours out of the cooler and then we put them right in the cooler. Our cool coolers are 38 degrees for our flowers and we have plenty of uh, water in those buckets. And every once in a while, when you, the designer, are going in there quickly pulling out a hydrangea and one doesn't go back in the water, that one wilts, but you cut it and put it back in and it comes right back to life. So we're very uh, fortunate, um, you know, to not really have to worry about that. Great. Uh, another question came in um, to me. Where did you get your foliage bouquets from? Uh, the FTD uh, flower exchange. Yep. From through Fern Trust, correct? Fern Trust, yes. Fern Trust foliage. We yep. get all of our things from Fern Trust and their bouquets. They have all different types of bouquets. You can look them up on your website. Uh, there are the ones that uh, this one is called the just the green bouquet. That's the one you showed. I showed you the hand tied. This one's got some fern and some plumosa, and this one's called the Moonlight Serenade. I did. Uh, Marta did another couple that were in the, actually, Miss Daisy, uh, Bob Tucker is on this call, and he um, developed that one book, Miss Daisy, and then maybe one's called the Bob. So I have both of those, which were in some of the bouquets that you saw as well. So it, it's a lifesaver um, to have the, the bouquets because it takes a split second. You cut it, you put it in there, you're done. And they come like this, and there's a little name. We just keep them in the box. We don't even get them out and whoosh, take this off, cut them, put them in our water that's got flower food and we're good to go. It's a glorious thing. Definitely a great time saver. Yes, a lot. I also purchase sometimes um, bouquets that are made, but not with a lot of flowers, just pre-made bouquets that are available also from your importers and your wholesalers that help us get started. And those are the same way, just cut them, put them in and you can add hydrangea or roses to go along. It's all about getting that job done quickly. All right, we've got another question that popped in there. Um, how much do the bunches sell for? And I'm assuming she's asking about the the foliage. Uh, that I do not know. You can you can get a hold of the flower exchange and find out. Uh, Fern Trust. Um, I don't know. Yeah, if everybody's the same, and I don't know the individual. They run a couple to a few dollars, like right around the three dollar price range. So that's really great, and a big time saver. So labor cuts on your labor. Perfect. All right. Um, okay. Um, uh, uh, yeah, we've got another question. Eileen's asking if they can email the price of the Fern Trust bouquets. Okay. So that I believe is what is going to be part of the special offer that they're emailing you guys tomorrow. So everybody on here will get an email um, in your inbox tomorrow um, from the FTD Flower Exchange with that special offer. So I believe that's one of the things they're going to be talking about. So um Everybody should get that tomorrow. And Wonderful. I think that we are out of questions for today. I don't see anything else in there. Um, I just want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, recording will be available on demand on the FTD Mercury Network Florist YouTube channel. You'll also get an email tomorrow with the, the link for this recording directly to your inbox as well. And for more education programming from FTD, visit ftdi.com 
to register for upcoming free webinars and design shows, as well as viewing other past education programs on demand. So thanks everyone and thanks Deborah. Thank you. Cheers everybody. Have a great holiday. Hugs and kisses.